Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. We're already in joy here just looking at some scriptures, <laughs> sure. and we're going to talk about prosperity. Pastor George Pearson is with us today. Welcome, George. Gloria, it is once again a delight. Tell them how many days be with you've you. been here preaching with 141 me. 141 days Glory we've been preaching on prosperity. No wonder we're all increasing. <laughs> Amen. Know, it's just and we want to hear your testimonies. And if you wonder if this works, you'll find out it does if you'll quit wondering and start believing. I, I like what you said before we went on the air here. You said, uh, I said, you said we need to get some testimonies and then you stopped and thought a moment and said, we need some victory over lack letters. That's it. Victory, victory over lack victory letters. Victory over lack letters. That's <laughs> true. We need we, those. We want some victory over lack letters from you that you are increasing Yes. You are in grow you are growing more yes. and more every day, enlarging, yeah. expanding, Amen. growing in the prosperity of God. Father, we pray you, over Lord. these broadcasts over these two weeks. And we thank you that we're on the increase. Mm -hmm. On the increase. When the rest of the world That's seems true. to be going down, we are going up. And we are reaching greater heights in your blessing Praise and God. in your prosperity. Thank in you, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, Day Gloria, one, we... one, four, one. <laughs> what's, yeah, 141. Way to go, George. 141. And by the Glory time we God. get through with these, we'll be up to 150. 150. 150. 150. Okay. That's right. Great. And you as remember always... remember that story about Ken when he went out to the, a certain place to the reservation? Yeah, and, yeah. and they were putting out the chairs and they kept saying 150, 150, because they wanted 150 150, chairs. yeah. But that was the only That's number the only, that he, he knew, knew in English. So 150. We're going to go for we're 150. We're going to go for 150. We're going to have plenty. That, that's right. That's Amen. right. Amen. Praise As God. always, Gloria, these notes are available to you. They're on kcm.org. Look for the picture of Gloria and me. Click on it and it'll take you to the same notes that we have yes. here. All of the scriptures, Praise all of the, the, the primary thoughts that we're talking about here, they are on paper for you. You can go back yes. to them. You can study them. And so far since we began this in 2010, we have had 350,000 outlines awesome. downloaded. Now, how many pastors have taught what you've shared with us? Because you, you allowed everybody right. to take it right. and preach it and use it. We have, we have pastors using them. <gasps> That's great. I, I go online, Gloria, every so often. I'll go online and I will, I will type in 50 days of prosperity or days of prosperity. And I find other ministers' websites who have taken our notes and are making them That's available awesome. to their people. Do it. Yes, take amen. Them, take them wherever they need to go. That is so, it's a blessing. And so it's very exciting it to be able to do this and to, <clears throat> and to encourage us. Well, you've done a great job of putting it all together. <clears throat> in, this, in this life of prosperity. We are living in days of prosperity. Amen. And so, are you ready to start? I am. You ready to go? Yes. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. We're going to begin with Matthew chapter 9. In just a moment, I'll tell you what our theme is going to be for these two weeks. But I want to read a couple of things to you first of all. So let's look at chapter uh, 9 of the book of Matthew. And we're looking at verse 37. Matthew 9, 37. It says this, Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is, truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Mm -hmm. Now, I like what the message translation says here. It says, what a huge harvest, said his disciples. Oh, hallelujah. How few workers. Now, we read that scripture, Gloria, in light of the harvest of souls that are coming into the kingdom of God. But there's another harvest that we can't forget, and it's the harvest of the seed that we have sown. Amen. That's right. And I read this scripture in such a different way as I was preparing for these messages that Jesus said, the harvest is plenteous. I mean, how many of us are sowers and tithers mm -hmm. and givers and don't realize that there is a massive harvest massive out there harvest. that's Think waiting about. for us? Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story. 
Oh, and that's good. this little story that I'm going to tell you is, is exactly how my study began of how to reap your harvest. And that's what we're going to be talking about over these next two weeks, how, how to, reap. to reap your harvest. Praise God. It was September the 28th of 1999. Brother Keith Moore was preaching at the church. And we did the praise and worship. The music was going on. We finished that up. And then Brother Keith got up, and <clears throat> this really wasn't directly connected to his message, but he had a word from the Lord. And this word from the Lord, Gloria, I was, I was not exactly expecting it. You know, when you get a word from the Lord, it's usually you're going to be doing this and you're going to do that. But this particular word kind of caught me by surprise. And Brother Keith said this to the Lord. He said, concerning EMIC's giving, our church, God's heart is grieved. I'm like... I bet your feathers didn't exactly <laughs> stick up, did they? No, those... <laughs> I was sitting wow. on the platform when he said that. I thought, where... I God? don't remember that. That's <clears throat> yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a stunning revelation that night. God's heart is grieved. It was bothering God that we are not reaping. Hmm. And I thought about that. I thought, Lord. Because in, in the context of the word, he said God was fine with our giving, but that his heart was grieved because we were not reaping. No harvest. No harvest. Mm. He went on to say, some are disillusioned and aggravated with God. How much more can I give? He said, you think you're waiting on God. You think reaping is automatic. You think once you put the money in, it's all up to him. You just sit back and relax and think it's all just going to come on you. That is ignorance and confusion. Yeah. I challenge you to hear the word of the Lord and make up your mind and say, I'm not just a good giver. I I'm a good am a reaper. good reaper. I'm going to get real good at reaping. Amen. You know, that makes me think of when I was a girl <clears throat> in Arkansas. Yeah. And my grandfather raised peaches. And he was good. He, he knew how to do it. He had trees full of beautiful, wonderful peaches like you've never tasted mm. before, probably. <laughs> but when, when they left the peaches without picking them, yeah. what did they do? They start to rot. They rotted and they fell to the ground. You got to harvest. You've got to harvest them. If you want to taste it, if you want to taste it, you got to harvest it. Oh, come on, oh, Gloria! I like come, it. On, come on, Gloria! That's, that's just fresh right there. <clears throat> if you if you want to taste it, you got to harvest it. Uh -huh. I hadn't thought of that till right then. <laughs> Excuse me, and George, we're yeah, busy right we're now. We're writing right now. <laughs> if you if you want to taste it, taste and see that the Lord is good, then you have to harvest it. That's right. That's good, Gloria. That's really good. And then when, when uh, they good. went to the, if they waited too long to pick and they went to the shed where they packed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they were too ripe, you had to dump them. <laughs> I wow. mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, you sell them for like, fraction of the cost yeah. or something, yeah. if they were too ripe to pack. <clears throat> but I, I'll bet you... So we can't let our harvest just hang out there. We've got to no, we can't. pick it. That's perfect. That's exactly right. I never had thought of that. That's, That's exactly good. right. And Pop, I'll bet you that he knew when to Oh, exactly, to reap. when. Yeah. He had, a, he had an in, inborn, developed sense of timing. And that when those mm -hmm. peaches were ready, and I can picture it because I remember one time when we were up in Arkansas and we were, <clears throat> we stopped by mom and pop's house and pop took me out and we went walking together. He took me uh, out to the street. We crossed the street and he said, this is where the peaches were. Were? Yeah, I guess by that time he didn't have peaches. They, well, they, the peaches, <coughs> the peach trees got to where they didn't produce, so they pushed them up. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going did. there, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. and, I, and I can picture, if you drive by the house, there's a front porch. Mm -hmm. And I just can't picture Pop sitting on the front porch. 
He didn't let them go to waste. Looking at those no. peaches out there when they're ripe and ready to pick, going, I don't think I'll do that today. That's when they call peaches that are too ripe and yeah. not good to eat anymore. They call them culls. 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 C U L L S. C U L L S. So we don't want our harvest <clears throat> to turn to culls, which are no good. Not edible. Don't want you your gotta harvest pick to turn at to the right culls. time. Got to pick it at the right time. Mm -hmm. Well, Gloria, you, you just. Well, I know. I hadn't thought is, of it this before. This is it right here. That's it. You know, my grandfather had a garden. And when I was growing up as a little kid, he had a pretty good sized garden. And in it, he had tomatoes, he had cucumbers, he had beans, he had just all, all kinds of good fruit and produce that he would grow in this garden. Mm -hmm. And Gloria, he would tend that garden every day. I would follow him in it. He had these paths through it and a big fence around it to protect it. Yeah. And <clears throat> he would know exactly and precisely when to harvest that fruit. We have to protect our harvest. We have to protect the harvest. And, and we'll, be, we'll be getting in, into that. We have that. to keep saying, <clears throat> but this harvest words. The same, the same principle of Pop's peaches applies to us. Makes my mouth water just thinking. <laughs> somebody, somebody get Gloria Peach. Somebody get me a <clears throat> Tim, go get Gloria Peach. Well, the same, the same principle applies to us. And it's time for us yeah. to get up, That's right. get out, and get into the fields Let's and reap it. our harvest. We're reapers. We're reapers. We plant, we reap. We reap. Uh, let's we turn harvest. quickly over to, to Jeremiah chapter 17. You said something right before we went on the air. We had a lot going on here before yeah, we're we went busy. on the air today. And uh, <clears throat> you, um, you said something in Jeremiah chapter 17. Well, actually, you said something first, and then we went over to Jeremiah. And you said to me, you looked at me sitting here, and she said, George, she said, once you harvest, then it's not seasonal, it's continual. That's right. Hallelujah. So our harvest is not based on a <clears throat> on a season. The the That's right. Not our harvest. Our, not our harvest is based on a on a season. It's continual. That's right. As we give Of course we keep planting. We keep planting. We keep reaping. That's right. Hallelujah. That's exactly right. Glory and when you said God. that, that the harvest is not seasonal, it's continual, this scripture jumped into my heart and we turned over there, Jeremiah chapter 17. <clears throat> Take a look at this. This is really quite something. This is fun, George. It says in verse 7, Jeremiah 17, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. So really, that's the foundation to our lives right there, yeah, that's that right. we are blessed, empowered to prosper, that we are being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing the earth, subduing it, having dominion over it, when Amen. we trust in the Lord and who's, who, when we put our confidence in Him. But look at the results. Look at verse 8. He shall be like a tree planted yes, by the waters, Amen that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes, but her leaf shall be green. That word green there means to flourish and thrive mm -hmm. and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Praise God. Praise you know, God. <clears throat> once we get into a life of sowing, we can then enter into a life of reaping. Amen. And you know, the, George, just th hold your thought, yeah, but I yeah, just had ahead. this. When we, where Pop used to have the peach orchards, it's where we built our little cabin down there, our little house, right. you know. And, uh, and it was full right? of rocks. I didn't know that. That was all peach orchards. That was peach all peach down trees down, down by there. So it was really? full of rocks. And one day we gave John and Kelly <laughs> the job of going out and picking up rocks. Yes. That was not harvest. Yeah. There was no peaches yeah. left. There yeah. were no trees left, no peaches, no harvest. No harvest. Just rocks. Wow. You're so saying we, something. We, we've, got to, we've got to have a continual harvest. And we so can. you have to keep planting. Have to keep planting. Yeah. And we have to keep reaping. And keep reaping. Keep reaping. 
Now, <clears throat> when Keith Moore gave that word, that was a pretty strong word. God's heart was grieved. What I did, Gloria, I, I, I gave our church a challenge, and I'm giving you a challenge. I'm giving us a challenge that what Brother Keith said through the Lord, we are not just good givers. Yeah. We are good reapers. Amen. And we are going to get real good at reaping. We're going to get really good at reaping over these really next two good. weeks. We are, we we are having... We cannot let the harvest <clears throat> rot in the field. We can't do that. No, no. We have to reap. Harvest is out there. Mm -hmm. People don't realize it. They don't know that they have a harvest out there. And like, like the Lord said through Brother Keith, um, people are aggravated. They're disillusioned. People have given and sown and sown but they haven't seen the results of that. They say to themselves, how much more can I give? And, and the Lord said, you think you're just waiting on God. You think that yeah. reaping is automatic. You think once you put the money in, it's all up to him and you sit back and relax and think it's going to just come on you. Those peaches did not jump no, off the didn't. tree and into the barn. You know what they did? They rotted. <clears throat> if they weren't there. fell to the ground. They fell to the ground. they weren't harvested. Do you remember that as a girl? Do you remember him harvesting peaches? Oh, heck yeah, I worked in the peach shed. Get you fuzzy. were out there. I was, I was working with the peaches. I started out, my first job was a dollar a day to answer the telephone during the harvest. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So that means that everybody was out there Yeah. at harvest right. time. That's right. There was a lot of activity. There was a lot of activity. A lot of, then you, pack, you picked it, you packed it, you shipped it. That's what we did. You pick it. <laughs> I'm, lear I'm learning some Let's things. See, you pick, pick it, it, pack it, pack it, and I'll, I'll and think of a good word. What was the last word? Shipped it. You shipped shipped it. it. Okay, shipped it. <clears throat> That's good. You pick it. But you, you pack ate it. it too. Yeah. Man, those were good. You you talk about you just don't know how good you, a peach is till you, you pick it off the tree. You tasted of the good fruit. Yeah, amen. And so you answered the phone where you were. I got paid a dollar a day answering the telephone. I had to go from the house down to the shed, tell okay. him it was a telephone, okay. tell him this. So was Doug out there, your brother? No, he was too Rich? little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they weren't big, but there were other people that were out there. He was, I mean. It, oh, yeah, you have maybe 40 <clears throat> people under the pack and shed pack and all that there stuff. There was a bevy of activity that was going on harvest during harvest time. Harvest was busy. Folks. And harvest it, was good. Yeah. Tasted good, yep. produced good, blessed good. We're in harvest. We're in harvest. Hallelujah. Time. And, and so what I did was I, I told our congregation, I said, we're going to get really good at reaping. Yeah. We're going to get good at reaping. And I, I'm good at reaping and I'm still good at reaping. I'm going to get better, better still yeah. good at reaping. Amen. You know something, Gloria, I was going to wait to tell you this until our board meeting but this year, but... But our church, our church, Eagle Mountain Church, we sowed over one million dollars in 2013. Awesome. Praise God! We got a harvest. Harvest time. And we time. are calling in. We're calling in the we're harvest. We're not going to let it rot in the field. Either. We are we're not letting it, it rot in the field. Praise God! <clears throat> there is the same things that you're talking about with pops peaches. Is the same principle that applies to reaping your harvest. That's right. And we got to get with the yeah. program. We have to get with the program. So what I did back then, if this is... If we didn't pick it, the, it would rot. And we can't let that happen. No. Mm -mm. In 1999, when Keith gave, Keith gave that word <clears throat> on September the 28th, um, I started studying his series. Now, this is important Keith for you to Moore know. And Keith Branson. Moore has a series that you can go online to More Life Ministries and it's called Rules of Reaping. Rules of Reaping. It's absolutely free. You can download it. And I listened to those teachings over and over and over again. I listened to them last week. I need to listen Rules to those again. Rules of Reaping. Glory and basically God. what we're doing on these two weeks, I've taken what Keith taught on those, those messages and I've, I put them into oh, our he'll teaching. Oh, will be happy about so, that. But what I did was I... I listened to those, I studied those, then I went and I taught our congregation about it. And we began to call in our harvest. And we do that at church. Whenever we receive tithes and offerings at church, one of the things that we do with our congregation is we call in the harvest. Yeah, you call it in. That's right. Call it in. You're reaping. And that, Gloria, I discovered in, in my own life, 
was the missing link to increase mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, I can see that. And that's the same thing with us. I believe with all of my heart that calling in the harvest is the missing link. I agree, George. That's to right. To increase. That's right. That's acting on your faith. That's acting That's on your faith. That's using your words to bring about. Your words have power. <clears throat> That's and right. Authority. That's exactly right. When you call it in, it's coming in. We have a minute, 30 seconds. Oh, it can't Let me finish be that with this. Long. There's a scripture, Psalm 107, page two there, Gloria. Um, and in the New Living Translation, it says, There he brought the hungry to live. They founded a city where they could settle. They sowed their crops. They sowed. They planted their they vineyards. Planted. And they harvest their bumper crops. And they harvest They it. harvest it. They planted. They harvest it. And it says and in verse reaped. 38, He blessed them and they prospered greatly. Their herds of cattle never decreased. We're going to get good at reaping. God. And let me just read this last mm -hmm. quote. You've got it on your page there from Brother Copeland, an article that he did called Get Your Mind on the Harvest. Listen to this. If you haven't thought of yourself as a harvester before now, start thinking of yourself that way. Renew your mind to the truth of God's Word. And glory, that's what we're going to do over that's these two right. weeks. Amen. Dare to believe the Lord of the harvest that's is calling good. you, yes, you, to help Him bring His end time crops. Glory to He's God. He's speaking to you and saying, until now, you've known me as the Lord over your seed. You've known me as the bread provider. But I want you to know me now as the Lord Ooh. and the minister of the harvest. That's awesome. So when awesome. we talk about harvest, Glory Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. And, and all we have to do is follow him and follow his God. leading and he will help us harvest. And it's harvest time. It's harvest time. And when time. harvest time comes, you better get your fruit, your vegetables or whatever you planted in. Yep. You better get it get in. It. Call it get in. Because we Tell don't want it. Tell it to come in Jesus' name. That's right, Gloria. Glory. That's right. Talk I'm so excited. Remember who, who did this? Money cometh. Leroy. Money, Money cometh, cometh to, to me, me now. now. Leroy Thompson. Leroy Thompson. The teachings that we've done, the, the outlines are available online, kcm.org. These Praise outlines God. are available to you. Uh, just go to the home page, click onto yeah. the picture of Glory and Me, and it'll take you over to where the notes are. You can print them out, study them, add your own notes to them. We have pastors that are preaching them. That's what I wanted to mention. Yeah. If you've uh, if you've been teaching and preaching these things, write George and let him know. Hey, thank we you, need, thank you. We need victory over lack letters. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Give us some good testimonies. And so we're talking here in these two weeks, Glory, about how to reap your harvest. And we began yesterday talking about the scripture in Matthew chapter 9 in verses 37 and 38. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Note that there, the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. He will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. And so the point that I saw in this as I was studying about this topic that we're teaching on here, how to reap your harvest, that not only is this harvest have to do with the ingathering of souls into the kingdom of God, yeah. but it has to do with the reaping of the finances off of the seed that we have sown. That's right. And people have gotten frustrated because they've sown and given, but they haven't seen the results. And yesterday we found the missing link. The missing link to increase is you have to reap your harvest. That's right. You have to get it. Pick your crop. And there was a, a, a word oh, that was yeah. given on September the 28th, 1999. Keith Moore uh, was here. It was, it was so long ago that Keith's beard was black. I mean, that's how, that's how Man, long, that's how long ago time. it was. And, uh, <clears throat> but Brother Keith was, was starting to share that night his message, and he started off with a word from the Lord. And I want to read this to you again. Read it. He said about our church's giving... God's heart is grieved. That was hard. <laughs> Did you hold your breath when you said that? I just went, huh? What? God's heart is grieved. It was bothering God that we were not reaping. Mm -hmm. Some are disillusioned and aggravated with God. How much more can I give? You think you're waiting on God. You think reaping is automatic. 
You think once you put the money in, it's all up to him. You just sit back and relax and think it's all just going to come on you. That is ignorance and confusion. Those are some tough words, aren't they, Yeah, Gloria? they are. And the Lord said this to us. I challenge you to hear the word of the Lord, to make up your mind and say, I'm not just a good giver. I, I am, am a, a good, good reaper. reaper. I'm going to get real good at reaping. Amen. That's good, George. And that's, that's what we did. From the Lord. Gloria, that's what, that's what we began to do. I started, this is what I did after I heard Keith that night, heard the rest of his message. I just, I dug my heels in and I started studying. Actually, I began with a series that Keith had, which is available on More Life Ministries website. It's free called Rules of Reaping. And it's a three CD message that he taught a long time ago. I think he was still teaching at Rama at the time. But he detailed out things that I had never really heard or articulated before about how to reap a harvest. Gloria, it would be like, and you talked about Pop's peaches yesterday and how he knew when to reap those peaches. He knew when to pick them. He knew when the right time of harvesting. And you started sharing things about harvesting that I had never known before, uh, especially about harvesting peaches. Well, in the same way, and I don't know if Pop ever did this with you. I don't know if he ever sat down with you and said, Gloria, here's how you do it. Or you just watched him and you saw how he did it. And that's, that's how most of us learn anyway. I talked about my grandfather's garden. Mm -hmm. I learned about gardening by watching him. He was really teaching me. Well, in the same way, there is a spiritual agricultural education that we need in terms of the sowing and the reaping of our seed of not only the word, but yep. also of the seed of the finances that we give. That's right. There is a training that has to take place. So what I did, Gloria, I dedicated myself to getting trained at this. I wanted to know about this. I wanted to know that if God was grieved with our giving because we weren't reaping, I wanted to be able to teach my congregation how to reap their harvest. And it's very interesting that this concept, this biblical concept of sowing and reaping, yep. that it is our responsibility to reap the harvest, you don't hear too much about that. There's Think not about a lot this, of that. George, and thinking about the peaches. That, uh, at, at one time when I was a girl, there were lots of peach orchards in, in that southwest part of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, though, they, there weren't too many. There were just a few orchards. So there wasn't too much crop because nobody planted, nobody reaped. Yeah. Nobody planted, nobody. And so eventually there, there, was hard, there were hardly any, just a few orchards down there now. So we have to, we can't quit. We never no, can we can't. quit. We can't. Reaping. We ha and to reap, we, we have to plant. <clears throat> Gloria, Gloria, Terry and I remind ourselves of this constantly. We, we sow. We're partners with this ministry. We're givers. We're tithers. Amen. And we, we, we have, we, we gave a lot last year and we made a commitment between each other. We're giving more this Praise year. Praise God. That with every year that goes by, we are going to give more. We up, up the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the giving uh, increase. of our That's increase. Called increase. It's called increase. Increase, sow, increase, reap. But increase, sow, increase, reap. Got That's it. Right. Got it. <laughs> and wait a minute. <laughs> increase, sow, increase, reap. And be, because of this teaching and this training, that's one of the things that Terry and I include in our own yeah. lives is the reaping side yeah. of, of what we have planted. That's true. I like what Keith Morris said about this. He said that the harvest, oh, I remember how Keith said this, why he was saying this. He grew up on a farm and <clears throat> he, at harvest time, they'd come and wake he and his brother up early. early. <laughs> before sunlight. I mean, it was early, early. And they would say to him, Keith, you need to get up because that crop is not going to jump out of the field yeah, into the it barn. It sounds like something from the old times. Yep. <laughs> but that's the same thing with us. It's not going to jump out 
of the That's good. That's field into the barn. There are things that we need to do. And as we talked about yesterday, yeah. that ha harvesting to me was the missing link to increase. It's, it's a factor of yeah, that equation right. that we don't just sow the seed, we have to reap the harvest. That's right. when, we, when those peaches weren't <clears throat> picked, they rotted, fell to the ground. No good. And he knew, he knew when yeah, he did. to harvest them. And as I said yesterday, I, I have a picture of that house right now. I can see that house and I see the front porch that goes around mm -hmm. the house. And I just can't see Pop sitting there in his rocking chair with his feet up looking out there at the peach field and not doing anything about it when oh, it's no. time to harvest. That's right. There is a, there's a knowing on the inside and there is a continual harvest. You said this yesterday. I kept yesterday's notes. You said that, that this spiritual harvest that we have, it is, it's not seasonal. No, it's, it's not continual. Mm -hmm. It's constant. We, we name the season. We, we decide when the season is by when we plant. Any time is good planting time. Any time. When it comes to finances. <laughs> any time. I'm writing it down. Any, any time. See, you have to understand something about when I'm sitting here with Gloria. I look forward to coming in. I'm talking to them for a minute. I look forward to coming in here because of the wisdom that this woman of God has. And so I'm adding these to my notes. Any time. Any time. Any time is sowing time. That's right. Any Praise time is God. sowing time. And so you said yesterday, it's not seasonal, it's continual. And, and the scripture yeah. that we use was from Jeremiah 17 that says that we'll be planted like a tree by the waters, will spreads out her roots by the river, shall not see when the heat Amen. comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be anxious or worried in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. It's continual. Now, this, this thought just jumped into my mind as I was thinking about this saying this, that <clears throat> her leaf shall be green, shall not be anxious or worried in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. Isaac sowed in famine. He did. When no one else was producing so around what, him. So what did he do? He reaped. He reaped. No one else was reaping. He reaped when no one else reaped. Wow. That's good, George. We'll get into this later on in the teaching, but we cannot be moved by what is going on around us. There are people that stop tithing and stop giving because of what is happening in the economy, and we just can't do that. When we get around to it, think about this. Pop used to have, he knew, he, he knew when to reap. He knew when to, to sow, he knew when to reap. And if you left the fruit on the tree, it rotted and fell to the ground. Did he get, he didn't let that happen? No, he did didn't it? let it happen. But if he you didn't, didn't reap, if you planted, sprayed, did everything you were supposed to do, but you didn't pick. Yeah. It now, rotted this is, and fell to the ground. And this is something, though, and I'll, and I'll bring or this it up. fell to the ground and rotted, I should I, say. I'll bring this up here, and this is something that Keith taught me in that series on, on how to reap your harvest. He said that there's a difference. There's a difference. This is an illustration here. I got it. There's a difference between... <laughs> there's a difference between a natural harvest and a spiritual harvest. Mm-hmm. In the natural, that fruit will drop, and it, this, if this wasn't picked, it would have eventually rotted. That's right. But this, listen to what he said about the spiritual harvest. The spiritual harvest does not rot. It's still out there. Waiting? Waiting. Hmm. The spiritual harvest is still out there waiting. Yeah. And I heard, oh gosh, this was years ago that Dennis Burke taught this. I have the scripture later on to talk about, but Dennis Burke was talking about this and how he was talking about, there, there are people that have sowed, but did not reap. There's, oh my, yes. Gloria, there's harvest out there that has been sowed and it's still standing. And that, that we in the kingdom of God right now, we should be reaping that harvest. I'm getting kind of way ahead of myself on this one, but we, we should be reaping that harvest because it's still out there. Mm -hmm. And I heard Kenneth preaching about this on a message talking about 
Nani and Grandad, and how as they were coming up, they knew to sow, they knew to tithe, but they didn't know as much about reaping. No, that didn't. didn't come till later on in their life. And he said their seed that they sowed yeah. that we need to be reaping. That's true. And so one of the, th the words that Keith uses is on his teachings on rules of reaping, we have to reap it all. We got to reap it all. In the same way that Pop, he'd get out there to reap those peaches, he reaped it all. We have to do yeah, the same thing. Right. Now, I'll give you but an if example. You left a, if you left it there, it'd rot. Yeah, but in the spirit realm, it's still out there. Ours, right. Our spiritual harvest is still out there. That's true. And so what am I doing as a pastor, as I shared before yesterday, in 2013, our church gave over a million dollars in seed to other ministries, other works. You better believe, Gloria, that we are reaping, reaping every reaping, reaping. bit Thank of that you. harvest. Amen. I'm calling it in. Glory to God. I'm sending yeah. the angels out Amen. there. That's I'm sending right. harvesting angels to go get it. See, when, when, we, when it's harvest time, and I'm, I, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I've heard about it. I've heard you talk about it. I've heard Kenneth talk about it. I've heard Keith talk about it. There is massive activity at harvest time. Oh, yeah. Sowing seed, you know, they'll go out, they'll sow some, come back in, go out, sow some more. But when harvest time comes, it's like, okay, come on, we're, we're out there. We got to go get it. Yeah. There's an excitement. The That's Bible right. says, the Bible talks about the joy of harvest because of the excitement of reaping. Yes, amen. And you have to maintain daily, mm -hmm. not only a life of sowing, but a life of reaping harvest. I mean, every day Terry and I get up and it's dark in our room, but one or the other, it's usually me. And I will get up and I will stand up and in the midst of that darkness, I will say, we are expecting our greatest blessing and ever. harvest ever today because Amen. great grace is upon us all. What a way to wake up, George. We do that. Glory to we God. We do that. That's good. And she'll start, and, and we just, I mean, we don't, we don't say, good morning, dear. No, we get up and we, <laughs> we hit it from, That's great. I like from, the, that. from the first word of the day. We That's make absolutely habit. sure. I'm just kind of going on and on and on. But, but I believe this it. is just bubbling up in me. Our first words of the day are like God's first words, let there be light. Praise God. And so that we is have a to get a marvelous habit. We have to get up every morning as if there is a harvest out there and that harvest is ready to reap. Yeah. We have to get up with that same attitude. Amen. There's a harvest to reap. There's seed to sow. And I've got words to say. And you've got words to say. I'm getting it, George. Praise God. Glory to God. And so all that to say, Gloria, I immersed myself. Yeah. And that's why you have to immerse yourself. That's why the product offer that we have for these two weeks, How to Reap Your Harvest, we just have to absolutely immerse ourselves in this so that it becomes so real on the inside. We, well, I'll, I'll just quote Kenneth from yesterday. I kept my notes from yesterday. Kenneth said this, he said, if you haven't thought of yourself as a harvester before now, start thinking of yourself that way. Amen. That's Gloria, a good word. Gloria, we are harvesters. I'm a harvester. And that leads Ken's us into harvester. this subject that we're talking about today. You have been created by God to harvest. Gloria, Amen. we've been created to harvest. Ooh, that's good, George. Awesome. You and I have been created by God to harvest and... I am a harvester. I am a harvester. Amen. Repeat this after me. I am... I am... A harvester. A harvester. I'm getting really good... I'm getting really good... At reaping my harvest. At reaping my harvest. I am, Gloria. I'm a good harvester. I'm yes, a good... Amen. I'm a good reaper of the, the more you seed harvest, that's been the more sowed. you sow. The more you harvest, the more so you sow, increase. and it just, you it just keeps increase. increasing. Glory to God. And we have to know, this is one of the things that Keith taught me, we have to know we have been created by God to harvest. The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. We reap the hundredfold return. That reminds me of something right. that you taught me, 1979. 
George, I'm glad you were listening. <laughs> you taught me this in 1979. You were preaching about the hundredfold return. Mm -hmm. And it's in Gloria's book, God's Will is Prosperity. You got to read that book. I have my original Gloria Copeland signed copy at home. And you taught a whole chapter in there on the hundredfold return. Praise and you God. said that what you need to do is you need to get into the place where you get up every day and you say that hundredfold return is working for me all the time. That's right. See, we have a we have you a. You know how you let things slip? I haven't been doing that lately. Thank you, George. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> and I know, Gloria, I have, there is no limitation. Okay, I'm, there is, there is no limitation to the size of the field that no. we can sow in. That's right. Pop had a certain limitation because he only had certain. Acreage. Acreage but we have unlimited acreage to sow into the kingdom of God. Praise God. That's and our right. life of sowing is getting bigger and bigger. The life of Kenneth Copeland Ministries sowing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. Millions of dollars have been sown yeah, into the kingdom all, through this true. ministry. Uh -huh. Millions. Think about the harvest. Glory to God. And we call in the harvest. We call in the harvest on Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We yes, call in the amen. harvest on Eagle Mountain Church. We call in the harvest yes. on George and Terry, Kenneth and Gloria. I mean, we all have, if you, could, if you could close your eyes and look at what your fields are like. I just have this image and these, this picture of the rolling harvest fields that fields go on. Fields are white with harvest. White with harvest. Glory to and God. I have an image of those combines that are out there, those spiritual combines that are reaping the mm -hmm. harvest. And we were created by God to harvest. Right. Let me, they just gave me the, how many, go how ahead. many seconds do I have left? <laughs> Five minutes. We can oh, get a, you can do it. Five two and a half minutes. Two wow, and that half. was fast. Well, that was a fast two and a half minutes. Let, let, me just, let me just finish it up with this. Okay. And you can get the notes to get the rest of it. But we're created by God to reap harvest. In Genesis 1, God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful, sow seed, reap harvest. That's what Adam and Eve were doing. In Genesis 1:29, God said, look, I've given you every seed bearing plant throughout all the earth and all the fruit trees for your you good. I've given you seed. I've given you seed. I've given you seed. So attached, there is a harvest attached to every seed. Glory to God. If, I if were, it's harvested. If it's harvested. If it's harvested. And we were created to harvest. God That's created right. man to harvest. Amen. Then God planted a garden in Eden in the east. He put the, man had, he put the man he had just made in it. God made all kinds of trees to grow from yeah, the ground. Did. Trees beautiful to look at and good to eat, good to eat. They had to harvest. They harvested that. And the Lord took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So he was there to tend the garden. I would say that harvesting was part of yeah, the tending. Yeah. We still have a harvesting gene, don't we, George? We have a harvesting gene. Glory to God. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. Hallelujah. That's so Thank good. Thank you, Jesus. We have a harvesting. Let's, somebody else write that let's down. Let's turn I, on our harvesting, harvesting gene, gene and get to harvesting. It's in our DNA. It is, George. To harvest. In this God. last scripture, Genesis 8:22. As long as the earth remains, uh -huh. there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Harvest. Hallelujah. Harvest. Glory to God. Harvest. One of the, I've got 30 seconds. 30, what, let me just read this. 30 whole seconds. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, let me read it to you. This is the account talking about, Behold the fowls of the year. They sow not, mm -hmm. neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Yes. Why are we better than birds? Because we can harvest. We can plant and we can reap. We can reap. reap. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. George, Gloria. and I'll be back. You got something That's else? That's so good. Are you out? Harvesting <laughs> is in our genes. It is in our, we're but made to harvest. We're made to harvest. It is God's will for you to prosper. Yes, amen. Be hallelujah. in health. Amen. That's good. Prosper, even and as if, your soul and prospers. And if, if pastors preach it, teach it, whatever, 
Well, they need to share testimonies That's with right. you. We that need would some, be such a blessing. Like you said earlier, we need some victory over lack letters. We That's need some, right. We need to see Man. what God is doing in your life. That makes us feel happy. And Gloria, I, I am on fire. You're on fire. <laughs> George is really a Yankee, so he doesn't quite have the hang of <laughs> how quite. to talk Southern, but that's a good but start. But I'm getting there. I'm getting far. there. You're on far. I'm getting there. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> I am. I'm excited about this, Gloria, because we are learning on these broadcasts, these two weeks of broadcasts, how to reap our harvest. Amen. You know, this started in 1999 Praise with Keith God. Moore coming to our church, had a word from the Lord that God was grieved with our giving. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we weren't reaping. Yeah, that's right. And in that word from the Lord, the Lord said that, that people are aggravated and frustrated with God. They think, how much more can I give? What more can I do? And they don't realize that it is our responsibility to mm -hmm. sow the seed. Mm -hmm. God brings the, the increase, but we reap the harvest. Faith in the Word and your words. That's right. Glory to God. That's exactly right. And I, I'm, I'm holding a handful of notes here from the last few days because I've written some things that Gloria said that I just have to repeat, <laughs> such as um, harvesting, spiritual harvesting is not seasonal, it's continual. That's right. It's not based on seasons and it's certainly not based on the economy. That's right. Thank the Lord. It, it rises above the economy. Gloria yeah. said, if you want to taste you have to harvest it. If we wanted to taste the strawberry, we have to harvest the That's strawberry. Right. Somebody harvested that one so you could <clears> taste That's right. It. That's right. Harvesting is in our genes. It is. We've been created by Amen. God. We talked about this yesterday. We have been created by God. It's in us. Amen. It's in us to reap the harvest. And then you said, <laughs> you're talking about George, reaping the harvest. you may be the only person that listens to me. Thank you <laughs> no, so much. No, I'm sure there are plenty of others. Let Gloria know that you listen to her. But you said, you have, with the harvest, you have to pick it, pack it, and ship it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then listen uh, to yeah. this. This is, we quoted this from Kenneth from an article that he wrote. If you haven't thought of yourself as a harvester before now, start thinking yeah, of yourself I'm a harvester. that way. I am, I am a harvester. A harvester. I Amen. am a harvester. Glory to God. And so these are some of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of days. Today, on this broadcast, Gloria, we're going to teach on something that I was so thankful for this. When Keith first brought that word to our church, he had by that time taught a series called Rules of Reaping. Oh, that's a great series. And that series is available on More Life Ministries. It's free. All of his materials are free. And so you can go there and you can get that series. It's a three, I think it's a three CD series and <clears throat> rules of reaping. So what we're going to talk about today and we have the notes for it is, do you have your notes? My notes, my notes. Did I give you your notes? My kingdom for Where some notes. notes? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I'll find it. Which one is go it? Go get my folder. <laughs> I got one here. No, those are the older ones. Oh, well. Did I, did I not give her notes? I'll catch on. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Gloria, George, forgive me George for not me giving sure you get this. your notes. Thank My you, goodness, sir. I'm usually quite diligent. And you don't care if we all preach your No, notes. go right That's ahead. What I, like about I think it. I'm just so over the top excited about this. That yes, to amen. Give you notes. Anyway, <laughs> rules of reaping. This is the topic for today. And let me give you the rules first of all. I've written them off to the side, Gloria. I got it. So, Okay, and we're going to support it with some graphics here so you can see what the rules of reaping are. Rule number one, reaping is not automatic. That's right. That's exactly right. It's not automatic. Mm -mm. It's not automatic that when, when pop was, harvest time came for the peaches. That's right. They, didn't, they did not jump off the tree. Into the basket. Into the basket. Into the shed into and out the, the door. No. <clears throat> In the same way that that Brother Keith's grandparents, when it was time to reap on the farm, they'd wake him up early in the morning before the sun came up and said, now, Keith, the, those, that, that harvest isn't going to jump from oh, the field into the barn by familiar? itself. Yeah. So there's a responsibility. Anyway, reaping is not automatic. Rule number two, you have to reap. reaping is our responsibility. That's right. Say this after me, reaping. Reaping. 
is my responsibility. It's my responsibility. And rule number three is reaping requires faith. Reaping it requires faith. requires faith. That's right. So, Gloria, let's take a look at this. Oh, let's do, George. This <laughs> looks good. Rules of reaping. Rule number one, reaping is not automatic. Now, our scripture for this is found in Proverbs 10, 5. Proverbs 10, 5, and it says this. He that gathers in summer is a wise son, but he that sleeps in harvest is a son that causes shame. What a scripture. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What a scripture. He that sleeps in harvest. We cannot sleep in harvest. The harvest that we have in the sowing and reaping process, it is not automatic. It is something that, that it, it must be done. This New Living, this, the Living Bible Translation says this, A wise youth makes hay while the sun shines. But what a shame to see a lad who sleeps away his hour of opportunity. You can't <laughs> sleep and harvest at the same at the time. At the same time. That's okay, it. I got it. We're writing it down, right? Now, you, cannot, you can't sleep and harvest at the same time. And then the Living Bible Translation says, um, what a shame to see a lad who sleeps away his hour of opportunity. Well, that's the truth. And I, I took notice here that in these translations, the word harvest and opportunity are synonymous with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're, they're really connected to each other. Har the harvest is the opportunity for us to grow, to enlarge, to expand, to, to go into places we've never done before. So har I like this message translation. Go fishing during harvest. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you harvest during the harvest. You harvest. That's exactly right. You harvest during the harvest time. It's a set time. It is. Harvesting takes effort on our part. We must not sleep through the harvest. And we must not allow our harvest to stand in the field. It has to be. It has to be picked. harvested. It has to That's be picked. Right. We'll read a couple of scriptures here in this. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8 in the Message Translation. It says, You lazy fool. I'm not talking to you. I'm you lazy. Not. I'm not talking to you. You lazy fool. Look at the ant. Watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest it stockpiles provision. Praise God. Amen. So that's the that's example the that's given to us about looking at the ant and what the ant does. The ant, even the ant realizes that reaping is not automatic. And there's a time where you better harvest. There's a time when you better get up and get yeah, out into the field right. and harvest. And then Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, you know, before we went on the air here together, you were talking about how that scripture is taken in, really in the wrong way, or it's been focused in the wrong way. And, and you said it, <laughs> the way that Gloria said it really put the point across. You said, we've looked at that scripture before and said, what you sow. Yeah. You'll reap. That we all, yeah, that's the way you heard it. That's the way they talked it in the old days. And so there's an element of truth reap to that. Reap what I mean, you sow. You, you, that's what you said. You reap. You that's reap exactly you how you said it. You reap what you and sow. And so it's going to be bad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the indication that it's going to be a, a bad <laughs> harvest. But be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, mm -hmm. that shall he reap also. Whatsoever. 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 Amen. So, Whatsoever. You know, we're looking at this scripture in terms of So, of So sowing. it's plain that the man decides his harvest. Mm -hmm. Yes. You himself or what he sows. Oh, oh, listen to this. All right. It's plain that the man uh, decides his harvest by the kind of seed that he sows. That's right. That's right. His, yeah. his harvest is in his seed. That's right. So he knows what kind of harvest he will receive. One of the things that you and Kenneth have taught me over the years, 
and it is the, the foundational scripture to this ministry in Hebrews 5, is to become mature and more skillful in the word of righteousness. And you can really get to the place that you know, you know exactly what your harvest is going to be. That's right. By the seed that you sow. And you know exactly how to reap that harvest. So what you just said there, you know, you decide what your harvest is That's going right. to be by that seed that is sown. That's so, so you important. You could say exact seed is exact harvest. Exact seed is exact, is exact harvest. harvest. You, you name it yeah. by your seed. Yeah. In the same way that, that when my grandfather planted cucumbers, he knew what was in the seed. Mm -hmm. He knew it was he was going to get. That's what it said on the package. He cucumbers. never planted cucumbers and got tulips. Not never, ever. Never happened. Uh, never happened. Never happened. Exact seed, exact harvest. That's don't, right. Don't be deceived into thinking that God does not want to prosper you. God is not mocked because whatever good you sow, then you reap that good. Exact seed, exact mm -hmm. harvest. So rule number one, reaping is not automatic. No. Rule number two, let's turn over to Mark chapter four. This is a great scripture when we're talking about harvesting and really defining whose responsibility is it anyway. And again, we have to go back to the picture of the farmer and the farmer who goes out there and sows that seed, yeah. works hard, waters it, keeps the weeds out, does everything necessary to produce a good crop that when harvest time comes, he doesn't just sit on the porch and say, look out there, there's a harvest, expecting it to jump from the field into the, into the barn. No, there is a responsibility that we have. And it's wrapped up here in Mark chapter 4 and look at verse oh, 26. Yeah. Let me get over there. Mark chapter 4. And verse 26, this is so good. Oh, my, I hardly have any margins left in my Bible. <laughs> you have just, your Bible's I covered up. It's covered up. It says in verse 26, Jesus said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, rise up night and day. The seed should spring and grow up. He doesn't know how. For the earth brings forth the fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, or you could say when the fruit is ripe. When the time When the has time come. has come, immediately he, he puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. Could he leave it there? He could. Yeah, he could. He, could, he doesn't have to reap it after he planted it. Mm -mm. And a lot of people leave it in the ground. They might get stirred up over something and believe God, but yeah. then they let it go. They let it go. They, let it, they don't harvest it. You know, while you're saying that, we have to stay on this. Yeah. In the same way that we have to stay on top spiritually all the time. That's right. We can't, we we can't, can't be lazy. We can't let down your guard for one moment. But you know, that's, that's a life of joy. I mean, to oh, be that, able yeah, to do you're that. you're in the right place. <clears throat> because you, the, the, the more you do that, the more you, you stay focused on the Word and you meditate that Word and you do the Word, the more immersed in this. And Gloria, this, one thing that you and, and Kenneth have taught us, then you've taught the grandchildren and now the great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. is that the, the key to our survival, not only our survival, but to us thriving, yeah. is total immersion in the Word of God. That's right. Totally immersed. And as we've been totally immersed, the more immersed we are, the stronger we become and the more able we are to handle whatever attacks come, our whatever is done. Our faith is always up. It's, all, it's always up We're and it's always ready to go. That's what you've taught yeah. us. Yeah. And so here... We find, here, here are three questions I'll ask. In this particular passage, we ask three questions. Number one, who did the sowing? Well, the answer is the man. The man. Yeah. Uh -huh. A man should cast seed into the ground. Yeah, that's right. Who did the growing? That was God. It said God the earth the brought forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. Now here's the question. Who reaped the harvest? The man. man. The man. 
but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. What if you don't do that? You don't put in the sickle. It's going to sit out it there. It rots in the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me read this to you, Gloria. You have it there on your, your notes on number five. This is a quote from Brother Copeland, Faith to Faith, July 9th Devotion, uh, and it's called Keep the Weeds Out. And let me read this quote to you. Jesus compared the kingdom of God with the planting of seed and reaping the harvest. Yeah. It's a simple concept, one all of us understand. Why then aren't all of us producing bumper crops every season? Because we are sitting around waiting for God to do all the work. Hmm. There it is. Reaping is our responsibility. It's not automatic. That's, that's the rule number one. Rule number two, it is our responsibility. As we said, the harvest doesn't jump from the field right. into the barn. We have to go get it. There's certain things that we do, and I'll just interject this here right now, something that I do every day. I use my faith, and I call in that harvest. Harvest, you come to me Amen. in Jesus' name. Right. I reap that harvest in the name of Jesus. And there's a, a scripture that I wrote down at the bottom here in Deuteronomy 24, 19. It talks about when you reap the harvest in the field. You know, uh, we're talking about on the positive side now yeah. about reaping the harvest. Yes. But the law works both ways. It works for you or against you. Whatever you say, if you say right, it works right, yeah. you get blessed. Yeah. If you say wrong, it works wrong, and the blessing's not there. Yeah. If the blessing's not there, yeah. what's there? What does that leave? The curse. <laughs> the curse. <laughs> and That's you just, exactly right. You have to say your words are so important. You know, we'll talk about this on the last day, but I'll, I'll throw this in here now. That right. In Isaiah, there's a scripture that talks about the, the, the words of our mouths are like great combines and harvesters. That's right. That's exactly right. We reap with our words. That's right. Glory okay. to God. Look at your second page. We'll finish up with this. Okay. Rule number three of rules of reaping. In Ecclesiastes 11.4, let me read this to you. It says, He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regards the clouds shall not reap. The Amplified Translation says this, He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable <laughs> will not sow. That's right. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. In other words, we cannot be moved by what we see. Circumstances. Circumstances going on around us, the economy, what's going on in our nation. That's right. We, we are living in the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven operates off of a completely different system. That's right. That we can sow. You know, people are watching the, the NASDAQ, and they're watching the ups and downs of the, the um, investments and all of those things in the market. And... Kingdom of God, it's always up. It's always up. It's always up. And it's always a good time to sow. And it's always and a good time to we should always be up. We should, we should be. New Living Translation. Farmers who wait for perfect weather will never plant. If they watch every cloud, they will never harvest. That's the truth. So people who look continually at negative conditions, they get discouraged. They, get, they fail to sow and then they start failing to reap. You know, if, you don't, if you're not a faith person and you can't overcome with the words of your mouth what you see and hear, you ought not watch the news. Mm -mm. No, stay away from it. If stay in the Word. If you can't overcome it with your words. I mean, you just have to watch it with, as the world would say, a grain of salt, saying, that's yeah, not me. That's not me. They say trouble's that's coming, depression's me. coming, this is no. coming, that coming. You don't have to grab your head and say, oh, no, what am I going to do? You say, that is not me. That I'm is, a sower. Good, I'm a Laura. tither. Yeah. I'm blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. In Galatians 6, 9, it says in the message, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good, at the right time, we will harvest a good yeah. crop if Amen. we do not if quit do not and give quit. up. Don't quit. Mm -hmm. Do not quit. 
and get in, just jump in here with Glory and me yeah. about this. Yeah. And you, you are a sower, you are a tither. And if you're not, you need to start sowing and you need to start tithing and get that going That's in right. your life and then begin to reap that harvest that belongs to you. You gotta say right words. You have to, to say right words. And then finally, in this Genesis 26, 12, Isaac planted crops in that land, in that land of famine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the same year, he Ooh, reaped a hundredfold return because the Lord blessed him. Now that lets you know it's not dependent on the world's circumstances. Right. Or the right. world's season. That's it's right. It's dependent on our season. We continually harvest yeah. even in the toughest times. That's right. We continually harvest. And you know, this ministry has been through some tough times in years past. I've been here for That's 30, right. Woo, 38 see, years tough times, some of million my life. Dollar times and so watching, watching it. But I'll tell you something, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland stood firm. That's right. They stood on their faith. They We're believed good. God. They did not quit. They did not give up. And we continue to reap the harvest. Yes. And you know something? Today, at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, every bill is paid. Glory to God. Every amen. need is met. Yes, And amen. debt, there is no debt in this place. Glory to God be There the is glory. no debt upon us because here, they stood on this word, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. I'll finish with this. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their yes, hope and confidence. Yes, thank you, Father. They are like trees planted That's around it. along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the Praise water. God. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green. Hallelujah. And they never stop producing fruit. Say, that's me. That's me. Glory to God. The only way to renew your mind to the Word is that faith comes by hearing and yeah, hearing by the Word of God and applying the Word of God. Apply. And that's what we're doing here. So let me do this quickly, Gloria. I'll just kind of catch up on okay. where we've been these last couple of days. But as I shared uh, over the last few days, I received a word from Keith Moore who came to our church in 1999. And it got me going. It got me started on a path Praise God. that I've never quit since. And this is really what we're doing here is 15 years culmination of just learning, training, being taught about this. But uh, Brother Keith was at our church for a meeting. And before he actually gave his message for the night, he had a word from the Lord for our church, a message for our church. And I'm sitting on the platform excited about this message from the Lord for our church. And it said, God's heart is grieved. Uh oh, thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was bothering God that we were not reaping. Yeah. He said, some are disillusioned and aggravated with God. How much more can I give? You think you're waiting on God. You think that reaping is automatic. You think that once you put the money in, it's all up to him. You just sit back and think, that it's going to come, just come to you. That's ignorance and confusion. Those are strong words. Yeah. Ignorance, confusion. They go together a lot. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> but he said, I challenge you to hear the word of the Lord and make up your mind and say, I'm not just a good giver. I'm a good reaper. Amen. I'm getting yes, really amen. good at reaping. So Gloria, we found out, or at least I, I found out that where increase is concerned, the reaping part has been the missing link. I believe that. We've been taught to give. We've been taught to sow. But we really haven't been taught a lot about reaping the harvest. So we are becoming much better reapers because of that. We found out that we were created by God to reap. As you said, we have the, the harvesting gene. Yes, that's right. We have a DNA. I mean, it's, it's built in on the inside of us. We are... We are harvesters. That's what God has called us to do. Right. We learned about the rules of reaping, that reaping is not automatic. Reaping is our responsibility. And we have to reap by faith, reap by the words of faith that we speak, that we do not get um, discouraged or we don't quit or give up, that we will reap harvest mm -hmm. if we do not give up and quit. Amen. And I like these. These are a couple of quotes. This one is from Brother Copeland. If you haven't thought of yourself as a harvester, start thinking of yourself that That's way. That's good. I am. I am a harvester. I'm a harvester. Amen. 
I'm a harvester. Glory to God. And Gloria yeah. Copeland said this mm -hmm. just in the last couple of days. Reaping is not seasonal. It's continual. That's right. That's what we do. It's not limited to one, one bumper crop no. <laughs> for the year. Have you ever done that before? I mean, I, I've done that and the Lord has corrected me on it where Terry and I might have gotten a big something come in to the household. And the temptation for people is to think, okay, that's it for the year. No. But no, no. As I've shared with you every morning when we get up, we preach to each other. And this is exactly what we say. I am expecting my greatest yes, blessing I ever like today because great grace is upon us all. Amen. So I'm expecting that. I'm expecting our greatest harvest yes, ever today. And I say that even before we turn the light on. That's good. I Lord. mean, it just comes. I like that. It comes out of the darkness. I'm going to do that And myself. it brings the light. And those first words are so important. Mm -hmm. They're first so words. important. First words. There is the law of first mention. The law of first mention. And you know, here's something else I'll throw in here that Terry and I do. When we when we pray over our meals together, uh, we just don't we just don't say thank you, Lord, for the food. Amen. I mean, we have we have sessions of Praise prayer. God. We have sometimes we have to reheat the food, <laughs> but we have sessions where we are calling in the harvest, taking hold what belongs to us. What is ours? Amen. You said that any time is sowing time. Any time is sowing time. That's right. If you want to taste it, you have to harvest it. If you want to taste the good fruit, then you have to harvest the good fruit. You have to plant. And then you said you have you have to pick it, pack it, and ship it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's right. So those are some of the things that we've talked about over the last couple of days. And today, let's talk about Gloria the connection between tithing and reaping. There's a connection there. Praise God, I want to hear that. There's a very serious connection between tithing and reaping. And uh, I, one time, not too long ago, I was preparing to do offering in the church and the Lord gave me these three words, the tithing effect. That's good, I like the that. The tithing effect. The effect that tithing has on everything, including what you sow and how you reap. Mm -hmm. So Gloria, I want us to look at that. A successful harvester tithes. That's the main point That's of right. what we're bringing out here is that it's going to be very difficult to harvest it's if true. nothing is going in. Tithing is the bottom line to harvest. It really is. Because you, it really is. When you tithe, you bring God in on your deal. Yes, this is true. <laughs> I'm looking for my pen. And he can do such a much better job than you can do by yourself. I'm Glory writing. to God. You bring God in on your deal. Whatever it is. And he, whatever it is, and he can do a much better job. That's true. It really is. I've heard others preach about this. It's the covenant connection. That's tithing right. is the covenant right. connection. And if you aren't tithing, this broadcast today, you, mean, you need to make a determination. Oh. The tithe is the 10% yes. that belongs to God. And what he does with that 10% is he reinvests it for our well, benefit. You know, it's 10% of your gross income. You might say, well, my income is gross enough as it is, but that's the reason you got to get right. God in on your <laughs> deal. Glory to God. We okay. never increased to any degree until we became faithful tithers. Terry and I have been doing that ever since we, together as a husband and wife, ever since we got married. Have you lacked for anything? We have not lacked. Amen. We have, have not it. lacked for anything. And our giving continues to increase. I am, I am so thankful that we are tithers. Even in the, mm -hmm. the thin times, we still tithe. This ministry tithes. That's 10% right. right off of the top of the income of Kenneth Copeland Ministries uh, is, is tithed. And it's in excess now of what, $50 million that has been Praise tithed God. from this ministry. There's a confidence, Gloria, that comes when you know you're a tither. There really is a confidence that, that, you, can, that you can stand before the devil 
and say, I come against you in the name of a tither. If you tithe in faith. If you tithe in faith and you believe God. Yeah, you've got to release your faith. And it, it produces the windows. Believe the word. Opening, the windows of heaven opening before you, pouring out a blessing. But let's look at a couple of scriptures concerning this, because I believe this is important. This is one of the points that Brother Keith brings out. In his teaching called, <clears throat> called The Rules of Reaping, one of the things he talks about in there is why, why people don't harvest and why they don't harvest a big harvest. And one of the reasons mm. is that they don't tithe. They don't tithe. Yeah. And so let's look at this scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Mm -hmm. So shall your barns yeah. be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Praise God. The new King James, honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all your increase. Your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will be overflowing. Praise God. And notice it says here, barns. Your barns, barns will be uh, filled. Barns. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's Keith. Barns. Uh, your barns uh, will be filled with plenty. But think about the word barn in relationship to the harvest. Okay. Think that's, about where, that's where the fruit of the harvest goes. It goes into the barn. And a couple of things about tithing. Tithing is not sowing. Tithing is returning to the Lord what is His, that's what true. rightfully belongs to Him. Mm -hmm. It's the returning of the Lord, the first fruits of your increase. The tithe belongs to God. That's right. Sometimes, Gloria, <clears throat> and, and one of the things that we've done, Terry and I, is that we, we took a cue from you and Kenneth about how you handle your tithe. And we've, we have spent more time together praying over our tithe. What we used to do is we would take it to church and then it would be part of the worship time that we have there. But we, we take time to pray over that tithe in the same way that you and Kenneth mm -hmm. do. And we don't do an automatic deduction because we, as a, as a discipline, we have That's to right. pray yeah. over that tithe Release together. Your faith. Yeah. So there'll be times in the morning, Sunday morning, sometimes we'll take that time before we go to church, we'll take about 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe a half an hour, and we'll pray over that tithe. And there have been times when we're driving to church. I'll pull that envelope out and I'll hold it up. And I'll say, Lord, we are taking the hallowed things away from our house. Yeah, amen. And we are That's bringing good. them to you, literally. Bringing them to you. The devoted things. The devoted the things, yeah. the separated things, the separate things away. We're driving away from our house. And Lord, we're taking this with us. And we would not even think about not tithing. No. That is not that's never a consideration in our household. No. Why? Because we want our barns full. Because we remember when we didn't tithe. <laughs> yes, that's our right. Our barns were not full. Our barns were not full. They were not full. We need God in on our blessing, on our money, on our everything, our increase. And the Glory act of tithing is an honor to God. Yes, that's what it is. That's why we do that in church. That why, that's why we... That's honor why God. we have offering times, is to take that time and to honor God with our tithes and our offerings, and we lift it before Him, and we worship Him with it. That's and right. Jesus is the high priest of the tithe, and He takes that tithe, He turns to the Father, and He worships the Father with our giving. It's important. Amen. It's important, and it's important for the success of our harvest. That's right. Now, that's the connection, the tithe connection the tithe effect on our harvest. I'll read another scripture here. Leviticus 27, 30, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that people don't reap is because they don't tithe. That covenant connection is not there. So you're, you're keeping what is the Lord's. You're holding on to what is the Lord. You're holding on to what belongs to Him. And you're stopping the blessing yes. from operating. How can, how can if we hold back on the tithe, how can the windows of heaven 
open and be poured out on us. And I'm going to show you right now um, the things that I learned from Keith and the things that I've learned from you all and the things that the Lord has showed me about the tithe. Tithing protects the harvest. Praise God. Really, tithing is, a, is an insurance policy in the protection of our harvest. Well, the you, tithing is the open door to the blessing. Yes. And it's the blessing that God said forth that's going to meet your needs, give you what you need, bless you, keep you well, keep you prosperous. And so our tithing opens that door for God to move supernaturally. You know, He doesn't just come in and knock you over in your life. You have to open the door. You didn't get saved as soon as That's you could right. have That's or right. I could have because I didn't open the door before it. I right. didn't know to open the door, but still that door to him was not open. I didn't receive him. Well, tithing keeps the door open when you do it in faith. Now That's you can so tithe in That's unbelief so and it it's not the same, but you tithe in faith. You worship God with your tithe. Ken and I pray over our tithe. We worship mm -hmm. God with it. Mm -hmm. We believe God. Mm -hmm. And we sow it to the kingdom of God. It really and is. We're blessed. It really is for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Tithing is for That's our right. benefit. Yeah. And tithing is also for the benefit of our harvest. It right. protects the harvest. Let me show you. Let's turn okay. over to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3. And we're going to look at this key to the protection of our harvest and the connection of our harvest here. It says in Malachi chapter 3, in verse 9, we'll start, we'll start here in verse 9. You've cursed, you're cursed with a curse. Well, that's verse 8. Will a man rob God? Not Yet, this man. Not this man, <laughs> but you've robbed me. But you say, wherein have you robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Well, let me make a statement about that right there. That, that statement, will a man rob God? And this is one day I was, I was studying for a, an offering at church and the Lord ministered to me and he was saying it to me like this, George, will you rob me of my desire oh God. to bless you? Oh, that's good. Don't, will you rob me of your desire? Don't take that away from me. Mm -hmm. Don't like keep that. that from me. Don't, don't rob from me the opportunity to increase you and enlarge you and get you to the next level and get you to the next place. It really is the voice of the Father's love coming to me, speaking yeah. that to me. But it says here in verse 10, bring all the tithes, or the Amplified Bible says, the whole 10% of your income into the storehouse that there may be meat, food, nourishment in my house. Prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. You know that word open. I'm trying to open my Bible because I've written here on the yeah. side. But the word open there in the Hebrew means to cut, cut loose and throw open, throw open cut open. loose. That's what open means. Praise God. That's what he wants to do. Throw That's the open. result of the time. The windows of mm. heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I know, here we go. Here we go. This is the connection right. to the harvest. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Praise God. Now the devourer in the Hebrew means seed eaters and crop destroying pests. Wow. Did you ever read the margin of uh, verse 10 What's where it say? says, pour you out a blessing? Uh, it says, uh, empty out. Empty. Ooh, empty that's, ooh, that's out. Good. A empty blessing. Empty out. Empty that out. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. Wow. Isn't that good? That's, empty that's out. That's so good. Hallelujah. Praise God. That, little, that fine print's good there. What he does is he opens the window, windows of heaven, sends the rain on the seed that we have sown. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'll rebuke the devourer, the seed eaters, the crop destroying pests for your sake. He shall not seed destroy eaters. seed eaters. Listen to that. that. Now you can go somewhere with that. Seed eaters. Seed eaters. How about interest? Because you have to borrow money. Oh, glorious. That's a seed, seed eater. eater. Oh my goodness. Yes. My, my, yes, my. yes, yes, yes. He will not destroy or corrupt or spoil or ruin the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Christ. I like this one in the new NIV. It says, I will prevent pests from destroying your crops 
and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit. And it says in the New Living Translation, your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Yeah. Your grapes yeah. will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of the heaven's armies. Praise God. So basically what's being said here, Gloria, is that there's a protection over the harvest and it's the tithe. It's the tithe. Mm -hmm. The blessing. It's the is blessing. The protection and the blessing is released because of the tithe. If you look on your next page there, Gloria, there's a page that I included in the notes. It's a handwritten page yeah. and we don't have time to go through it. You can go online and get these. But look down there towards the bottom at the New Living mm -hmm. Translation. These yeah. are all translations awesome. and studies that I've done on the tithe. But it says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out mm. a blessing. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Praise Let God. me prove it to you. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them against insects and disease. Praise Your Lord. grapes will not shrivel before they ripe. All the nations will call you blessed uh, and will call you blessed for your land shall be such a delight and we will surely shout, we can't, we can't hold anymore. Praise That's God. the harvest. That's awesome. I like That's that. That's the harvest. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank How much you, time Jesus. do we have here? One minute, I can do this. <laughs> a farmer's experiment in tithing. Perry Hayden heard his pastor preach a message about tithing. He decided to try an experiment to see how much harvest a seed would produce. His plan was to sow one cubic inch of wheat, 360 kernels. He committed to the Lord that for a period of six weeks, he would tithe 10%. Six years. Period of six years. Six years. Tithe 10% of the harvest and sow the rest. In the first year, it took a four by eight plot of land to sow one cubic inch of seed. At harvest time, he scraped the ground in order to get every kernel of wheat, every precious seed counted. The first year produced a 50 fold harvest. Glory. He tithed 10%. In the second year, it took a 24 foot by 60 foot plot of land to sow the seed from the harvest of the first year. He tithed 10%. The third year, it took three quarters of an acre to sow. He tithed 10%. In the fourth year, it took 14 acres to sow. He tithed 10%. In the fifth wow. year, it took 230 Woo. acres to sow. He tithed 10%. Ten percent. Awesome. In the fifth, in the in the sixth year, by the sixth year, it took over two thousand six hundred acres to sow five thousand bushels. Three hundred and sixty kernels had turned into fifty-five billion, and the largest yield was only fifty-fold. Perry Hayden made two hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars in six years, compared to the other farmers who only made an average of twenty-one thousand dollars. That's awesome. The experiment worked. God can bless your harvest Glory when Glory to God. Tithe. That's marvelous. Hallelujah. It is the will of God, God. for us to Thank prosper. You, Lord. And one of the things that Thank God has word. given to you and Kenneth about the mission of this ministry, one of the uh, mission statements of this ministry, if you will, is to teach the laws that govern supernatural abundance That's and prosperity right. and increase. That's the laws right. that govern it's very important. abundance. And that's what we're doing here. In the same way that you, t you taught me and you taught Terry and myself as we've come up in this, learning how to prosper, uh, we're debt free today because Praise of what God. you and Kenneth have taught us and put into our hearts. Amen. And so that's what we're here to do with you, to take you from one level to the next, for you to break through and go over to those places of increase that you've never experienced before for the purpose of being able to reach out and minister those things to others. And we're teaching now on this broadcast and next week on how to reap your harvest. And it began in, in September of 1999 when Keith Moore came and had a word for our church. Uh, and it began that God's heart was grieved. <laughs> that was encouraging that at was, the moment, huh? That was, I'm like holding on to my seat, that God's heart was grieved. It was bothering him that we weren't reaping. We were good mm -hmm. at sowing, but we weren't good at reaping. And the Lord said, some are disillusioned and aggravated with God. How much more can I give? You think you're waiting on God. You think that reaping is automatic. You think that once you put the money in, it's all up to him. Some people do think that it's automatic. You know, yeah. you just... 
Just wait around. Throw it out and it'll come back. And in the same take, way... Everything takes faith for manifestation. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, I could, no, couldn't that's, help I'm myself. Right at, everything, everything, we're writing it down back there. Everything faith takes faith for faith manifestation. For manifestation. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that Pop went out there and harvested those peaches, yeah. we have a responsibility to do the same Amen. from the seed that's that we good. sow. That's right. He said... The Lord said to us, I challenge you to hear the word of the Lord and make up your mind and say, I am not just a good giver. I am a good reaper. Yeah, let's say, let's right. say that together. I am not just a good giver. I am not just a good giver. I am a good reaper. I am a good reaper. I am getting real good. I'm getting real good. At reaping. At reaping. Hallelujah. We found out that reaping, That's good. for me, reaping became the missing link mm -hmm. to the increase in the abundance. Yeah. And so we talked about this this week. We talked about the fact that we were created by God to be harvesters, that harvesting DNA, the harvesting gene yes, amen. is on the inside Me of us. Too. We talked about the three rules of reaping, that reaping is not automatic, reaping is our responsibility, and we, re we reap by faith. It requires faith. It requires believing God. Then, yesterday, we talked about the connection between tithing and reaping. And boy, we found out some very interesting things yesterday. The connection, the tithing effect on the harvest. Yeah. Um, we read some things from your uh, notes in your Bible. <laughs> you can't give a right offering until you give your tithe. I mean, what a powerful That's statement right. that is. And that the tithe was designed by God to protect the harvest. Yeah. I will protect you from the seed eaters and the devourer, and that devourer will so devour will not. So that you can increase. So that you can increase. Yes, that's right. And a successful harvester is a tither. Amen. A successful harvester is a tither. Praise so today, God. Gloria, we're going to talk about sowing and reaping. Good. A successful harvester sows seed, and this is so important for us to know because. I've heard you say this before. It's sowing and reaping. That's right. Sowing first. Sowing first and then reaping. And I just believe, and this is one of the things, again, that you as I was... You were a farmer and you went out to your field to reap, mm. but you had not yet sown, you'd have a very dry day. You... <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we have to you sow would have a dry day. to reap. You have to sow to reap. That's right. We really do. And uh, one of the things that I learned from that series, and I'll recommend this to you, Rules of Reaping by Keith Moore. Just go to his website, More Life Ministries. And uh, all of those are free. All of those are free downloads. He sows them from their Word Production and he Center. he reaps too in Jesus' he, oh, name. Oh, he does reap. And one yeah. of the things that he talked about in this, he in one of the CD messages he has, he talks about why people don't reap a harvest or why they reap a little harvest is because they don't tithe and they don't sow. Yeah. So today, we're just going to take this day That's and good. focus. This may be a review to some of you. This may be going over and covering a ground that you've covered before. But as I heard someone say one time, don't inoculate yourself against the new truth that God wants to bring to you from the oh, Word of God. Oh, that's for sure. You yeah. can't... You can't say, well, I've heard that before. It's like Brother Hagen, the, the guy that came up to him one time and said, when are you going to get off Mark 11, 23? Hmm. And Brother Hagen looked at him and said, when you get it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. We got to get it. So we're going to go back through this. We're going back through this again okay. about sowing and reaping. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to start with verse 7 here. Galatians 6, verse 7. I think you have your... It's your, you want my Amplified? Yeah, if we could, okay. I'd like to hear. Let me read it from the, the King James, and then we'll go to the Amplified. But a successful harvester sows seed. It says here in verse 7 of chapter 6, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap as well. 
And it goes on to say here, he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Amen. I like that because it talks about very specifically what to sow into and what not to sow into. And really when you are sowing, when we give offering, when we sow our seed at mm -hmm. church, that really is sowing to the Spirit. That's right. You're sowing into the Spirit and you'll reap out of the Spirit spiritual things, things of the kingdom of heaven, things of the kingdom of God, yeah. things of the blessing of Abraham. We will, we will reap those because we are sowing right. into the Spirit. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. A man soweth. Yes. That shall he also reap. So we sow right words. We sow our eyes in the right place. Yes. We don't sow things into us that are not right or sin or whatever. We sow to the Spirit, to the Spirit. according to the Word of God. That's right. And we reap from the Spirit. Glory to God. We reap from we the reap Spirit. We reap from the Spirit healing, every kind of blessing. Oh, yes. Uh, prosperity, yes. soundness, peace. Yes. Why, how do we get that? We sow to the Spirit. You know, you wrote an article which I'm going to be using in our outlines, uh, the, the product that we have, and the title of the article was Reap a Harvest of Healing. Praise you God. just said it. Reap, Reap a God. Harvest of Healing. Amen. So we see here, oh, what did your Amplified Bible say on verse 7? Galatians 6, 7, 7. what is that? Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Yes, I got God it. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, <laughs> disdained, <laughs> or mocked by mere pretensions or professions, or by his precepts. Ooh, I had never oh. noticed this one. Or by his precepts being set aside. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Meditate and think on mm -hmm. that. Selah. Selah. He inevitably, he inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatsoever a man sows, that and that only will he reap. Wow. Boy, wow. that's plain, isn't it? That is, that is plain. Wow, wow, wow. That is plain. Mm -mm -mm. Gloria, in order to reap a harvest, it really begins with the foundation of giving tithe mm -hmm. and sowing seed. That's right. And I was reminded um, that even God, which we'll read the scripture in just a moment, God will minister seed to the sower. Yeah. And I ask the congregation from time to time, I'll be standing up there and say, how many sowers do we have in church today? Hands will go up everywhere. Mm -hmm. How many tithers do we have in church? Hands go up everywhere. And we that's we right. call ourselves a sower. God mm -hmm. will minister seed to the sower. And the great thing about this is, if you don't have anything to sow, God will give he you, will get you some he'll get seed. you started. Yeah, that's right. He'll get you started. Reminded me of when you and Kenneth were in Tulsa and, and Brother Copeland wanted to be a partner with Oral Roberts and he sowed that pencil. Yeah, that's right. Sowed that pencil. That's all. He didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And then what was it that war, that woman came running, grinding up to him and said, the Lord's been worry warting me about, worry warting me about getting this, this what money. Was it, $20 uh, I think it was 10 or $20, Glory something like God. that. And he, Kenneth ran. He was wanting money to put into the offering, but yes. he didn't have any money. He, he reaped a harvest. Yes, he did. In that moment of time, he reaped an immediate yeah. harvest that came to him. Because his heart was in it. His so. heart was in it mm -hmm. and he knew exactly what to do with that. He chased down the basket and put it in the basket. And if, you, if you're in a position today where you're saying, I, I, I want to be a sower, I want to sow seed, all you have to do is ask God, Father, I yeah. receive yeah. seed to sow and he will get it to you quick. Amen. He'll That's get right. it to you quick. And you know, it doesn't have to be money. Whatever, you know, you've got something. You, everybody's yes. got something yes. they can sow. Time, ability, talent, whatever it is that we can give, God will multiply That's that right. back to us. Praise God. So we see here that we, we sow 
in the spirit, to the things of the spirit, and we will reap, we will reap out of the spirit. Amen. Now let's take a look over here at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to take a look at this. And I, I call this five qualities of a good sower. Oh, good. Five like qualities that. of a good sower. And we read here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, look at verse 6. It says, But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It goes on to say, Every man according as he's purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful mm -hmm. giver. And yeah. God is able to make all grace, all grace, abound towards you. This says every favor and earthly blessing. Every favor and mm -hmm. earthly blessing abound towards you. Come to you in abundance. Come to you in abundance, having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Listen to the Amplified. So that mm. you may always, say always. Always. And under all circumstances. Under all circumstances. And whatever the need. Whatever the need. Be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance. Praise God. For every good work Praise and God. charitable donation. That's an awesome word, isn't it? We're, it look at, what's, what does verse 6 say in the Amplified? Verse 6 says, remember this. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. Mm. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. And then seven says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind, purposed in his heart. Praise God. What he got in his spirit. That's that right. Give. And That's give right. generously. Give generously. Happily. Joyfully. Not sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Not grudgingly no. as the basket goes by. And no. Oh, oh, no. Man, I wanted to no. go to somewhere with that neat. You no. Know, when, when Terry and I will, Terry, Terry is so much like Kenna. And even in her giving, I mean, she, her giving, it used to be where it would just take my breath. I hear you on that. Because I know there what you would mean. be. <laughs> there would be times, there was one time in particular that we were at a convention and we, they, Brother Copeland was receiving the offering that night and Terry turned to me and, and she said, I believe we need to sow our savings. That's a big deal there, isn't it? And I just looked at her <laughs> and I've learned over the years to, to just, she just hears from God. And I looked at her and my flesh was like, because I'm the one that puts the money back. Yeah. I'm the one that takes care of the bills and I take care of the savings and all of that. And I have sometimes just to sh shake it off because I knew she was right. And Gloria, we did it. We left enough in the account to, to keep the account open, but we cleaned it out. And it wasn't but a few days later, it got filled back up again. Praise God. Filled back you up again. obeyed. Praise we obeyed. God. Now, based on 2 Corinthians 9, let me read you these qualities of a good sower. A good sower is generous. Proverbs 11 says he's a liberal giver. Praise God. A good sower is spirit-led. In verse 7 there in the J.B. Phillips, it says, let everyone give as his heart tells him. Mm -hmm, in verse 7 also, a good sower is obedient. If you be willing and yeah. obedient, you'll eat the good Amen. of the land. And a good sower is cheerful, just happy, joyous, Prompt, prompt to do it. To That's do what it. the Amplified Bible says. And the result of all of that is that we are furnished in abundance for every good work. Praise God. Praise good God for sowers. that. That's so we good are word. good sowers. And if we're good we sowers, then we can learn how to be Quick good, to good to reapers. Um, and this is interesting too. These last couple of things here, we should sow into areas that we desire to reap a harvest, whether it's money or clothes or houses or cars or whatever. Every seed produces after its own kind. And if you really believe in sowing and reaping, we get busy finding something to sow. Sow into good ground and you will have a much bigger harvest. I mean, these are just some things Praise that I've God. written down Those here. Are awesome. That's absolutely good ground true. is important. Yep. Good ground is important to sow into. Amen. And you know, we have a testimony. This is from Brian and Cindy Lee. 
And they, they have sown into some good ground. They've sown into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And I must say, Kenneth Copeland Ministries is good ground. Terry and I Praise sow God. into this good ground right here. So look at their testimony and see exactly what God did for them as they sowed their seed and they reaped their heart. Praise God. I just uh, was going through a, uh, a very painful separation and divorce. I, I didn't have any answers. I didn't think that God really wanted me anymore. Uh, I was young, but I felt like my life was over. I got born again in my bedroom, reading an old Bible that had been kicking around in my stuff for years. So I turned on uh, Brother Copeland in the fall of 1988, and he was teaching from Mark chapter four, and it changed my life. I became a partner. And uh, it wasn't long before I heard him talking about a believer's convention. So I lived in Boulder, Colorado at the time, and uh, I'd been through some very tough times and uh, uh, I bought a van for $70. <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine, Eric, and I, we, we decided that we would uh, make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and head for Texas. Long story short, we made it here on Tuesday morning and uh, there just seemed to be no agenda other than the Word of God and to live it. So in 1989, when I went back, um, obviously on fire, you know, full of the Word. I mean, I wore out tape players one after another listening to you know, the, the tapes that the ministry would send me and, uh, uh, you know, and then God began to prosper me some. He gave me my own uh, business uh, in 1989. He's, uh, I believe it was my angel spoke to me and said, why don't you go in the lawn business? And I did. And the first day I, I went out and made $60. <laughs> and uh, so I've, I've been doing that ever since uh, with, uh, with a pretty good degree of success. Brian Lee returned to Colorado as a changed man. He submitted to his pastor and spent many years in service to his local church. Brian and his daughters grew in the Word together. Through their church, they met a young widow with two small boys, and following many years of friendship, the Lord blended them through marriage into one family. Distracted by success before they realized it, Brian and Cindy found themselves trapped by growing debt. Without knowing it, I had turned my back on the principles that Kenneth and Gloria taught us about staying out of debt. And uh, uh, I, w I woke up one morning and uh, I was head over heels in debt. We had 16 creditors after us, mostly due to some really foolish business decisions that I had made, but um, came to one day where uh, we made a commitment that we were gonna become come back to KCM and be partners and find out the keys to make this thing work. And God um, gave us a seed, uh, gave us a, an income tax refund. It was $8,397. $8, $8,397. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when that income tax refund check came to us, I, I didn't have to pray about it. I didn't have to call my pastor and ask him. I didn't, I didn't have to ask anybody. I knew that that was my, that was my seed to get us out. And I just told Cindy, I said, we're sending that to Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Within six weeks of sowing this seed, despite natural circumstances in a depressed economy, Brian and Cindy secured a contract on their home. We took the modest proceeds from the sale of that home mm -hmm. and, and negotiated with each one of our creditors we closed out about 13 of those 16 accounts in six weeks. Mm -hmm. And if you and if you just add two zeros to that 8397, God took $839,700 debt off our books. And so Cindy and I, since 2008, we've taken a solemn vow: no more, no more credit, no more, no more debt of any kind. You know, we're we're just not going to ask anybody for a loan ever again. I can testify that today that we, we have become faithful in tithing and it has made a difference. It's brought peace to our lives. I don't worry about money like I used to. I don't worry about what's gonna happen this or what's gonna happen. I just say, you know what, God, this is, this is your ministry. If you want us to be there, you'll make a way for us. And God, always, He has done that. And not just with the ministry, but our lives and our kids. And, and it's almost like you just can't wait to see what He's gonna do next. We're better off now than we've ever been. And as we get more and more completely out of debt and pay off our homes and pay off all of our creditors and really enter into the fullness of the debt-free lifestyle that God wants us to have. Well, we're so young, there's, there's nothing but 
<laughs> good for us coming, but we know that the enemy, when he, when he attacks us as a, as a husband and wife, what he's really trying to do is to destroy the lives of our children, our grandchildren, our extended family. Since we have been able to walk through the, cr the crisis moments of life, it has galvanized our marriage. We are stronger than ever. And um, we know that our best is yet to come. Now, Brian made the decision. He made a quality decision to be a sower. Mm -hmm. He obeyed God, Gloria, and he reaped a harvest. Yes, I just so enjoy listening to the testimonies of our partners and our Amen. friends and what God has done for them. These folks have sown into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Yeah. And they stood on this word, 2 Corinthians 9. This is exactly what they did. He which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, but he which sowed bountifully, Brian and Cindy sowed bountifully, and they reaped bountifully. Yeah. Every man according as he purposed in his Praise heart, God. not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And Gloria, the partners and friends of this ministry are amazing they are givers. Amazing we givers. so appreciate the giving that you've done. Yes. You need to believe for the harvest, and you need to believe for verse 8 of 2 yes. Corinthians That's 9 right. in the Amplified Translation. Gloria, tell us what Ooh, that says. I, I leaned heavy on this one in our hard time. <laughs> yes, you did. And God is able. So that settles that. He's yes, able to yes. make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always, under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support from the outside and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. God. Glory to God. That was one of the earliest financial scriptures I ever stood on. And you, you sowed into Brother Robert's ministry. Yes. Ken, Ken was on the road crew, you know. He was part of the flight crew. So he was in all those big meetings. I was at home with little children and no, <laughs> no money. But he was in those meetings. And yes. he came home. And he, oh, he was so excited. He said, we're going to be partners with Oral Roberts. <laughs> and you were. And he said, we're going to send him $10 a month. And I thought, where would we get $10? Now, that is no exaggeration. That's where we were. Yeah. Yeah. Glory but to God. We're not there anymore. Look Hallelujah. at where you are. Yeah. And the, that was and the start, though. That was a big start of that sowing. And verse 8, Amplified has come to pass in your life. Yes. It's come to pass in my life. Father, Amen. we pray over All our grace. partners and friends as they yes, give, we bless continue them, to sow. I thank you that they reap mm -hmm. bumper crop Reveal harvest, yourself that they them. reap harvest, Lord, that is so huge yes. and so over the top that, Holy Lord, God. they know that their God is manifesting yes, himself Amen. to them. We magnify Praise you for Jesus. this. And I thank you that every bill that they have is paid, yeah. every need is met, and every debt is wiped out. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We agree done. and we call forth the harvest. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise. This is your year of victory. Come to the Southwest Believers Convention June 30th through July 5th at the Fort Worth Convention Center in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland along with Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Creflo Dollar, Keith Moore, and Bill Winston for a week-long conference that will change your life. Receive God's Word, His wisdom, and His plan to live a strong, healthy, blessed life. Bring your family and friends. There'll be live Spanish interpretation, pre-service prayer with Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, exciting youth services for teens, and Super Kid Academy for children. Come to a special partner meeting with Kenneth Copeland Friday morning. Then join Gloria Copeland for a powerful healing service on Saturday morning. Celebrate the 4th of July with us as we honor God for His goodness and celebrate our nation's birthday. It's all free June 30th through July 5th at the Southwest Believers Convention. For more information, go to kcm.org southwest. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God isn't against your having money. He's against money having you. He's against your making it your priority and putting your trust in it instead of in Him. Why? Because money makes a lousy God. God is so generous that He desires you to have the best on this earth. 
His plan is for you to have all of your needs met according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Get in on that plan by keeping your priorities straight. Seek Him first. Set your eyes on Him above all else, and all these things will be added unto you. It's always good for a believer to sow time, energy, and resources. That's how we make the kingdom of God grow. When the harvest is ready, it's your right to reap. Unfortunately, misinformation, misunderstanding, and mistakes cause lots of believers to miss their opportunity to collect the benefits that are rightly theirs. The How to Reap Your Harvest package with Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons was created to help you grab hold of your harvest. The package features the How to Reap Your Harvest BVOV broadcast, companion study notes booklet, and Kenneth Copeland's book, Blessed to Be a Blessing, a road-tested how-to guide that defines your role to receive the blessing. Combined, these resources provide the insights you need to help bring in your harvest. Learn the rules of reaping. God created mankind to be harvesters. The How to Reap Your Harvest package helps you understand exactly how to realize that reality in your life today. Learn the rules of reaping. Order the How to Reap Your Harvest package for the special price of $29.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call toll free 800-600-7395. Set your heart and soul on the goal of reaping your harvest. Discover the missing link between your sowing and your reaping. Order your package today. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. Today is your day Amen. to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Praise God. What a privilege, Gloria, it is to lead people Amen. into the kingdom of God where they can operate in the principles that we've been talking Thank about, you, that they can live above and not beneath the head and not the tail, yes, that Amen. they can experience the blessing of the God. Blessing. And look at this. This is a quote from Gloria Copeland oh that I wrote down during one of our tapings. And this, this is for you today. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is for you. Listen to this. It doesn't matter what's behind you. Mm -hmm. It's what's ahead of you That's right. that counts. Oh my. Let's go before the Lord Thank right you, now. Father. And I'm going to say this, and mm. Gloria's going to repeat it out loud, and you're going to receive yes, Jesus as your Lord. Yes, pray with today. me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I invite you now. I invite you now. Fill my life with your love. Fill my life with your love. The past is over. The past is over. I've been washed clean. I've been washed clean. The future is bright. The future is bright. And Jesus. And Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Lord. Fill me now. Fill me now. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. And I will follow you. And I will follow you. All the days all of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. If you prayed that with us and you meant it from your heart, you're not the same person you were before you got born again. That's how you do it. Now, you could have already been born again and just prayed with us, and that's good. And we want you to, uh, we want to help you. We want to send you this book. It's free. You just write us, help you learn more about what happened to you. Ask for the free salvation package, a book. He did it all for you, several brochures, one on how to study your Bible. Request, request your free salvation package today. Go to kcm.org, read your Bible every day, find you a good church that preaches the Word of God, increase your strength in God by putting the eyes on your Bible, on the words in, words in your eyes, words in your ears, words out your mouth of what belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Join us again tomorrow for day four on tithing and reaping. This is Gloria Copeland and George Pearson reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to kcm.org or call or write to us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you get the Word working in your life so you can experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living your new life in victory.